But hello there friends. So today we're going to get started on this vinyl top here. And you're saying, what? It looks like you just finished it. Well, to tell you the truth, whoever put this top on the last time, they uh, made a little mistake. They didn't put enough glue on the top. So what happens is when he's driving down the road, there's a big bubble that forms right here. So it must be a little embarrassing for him. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that. And we're going to take care of that embarrassment. So here we go. Believe it or not, but a lot of cars from the 60s and 70s are almost identical in the way they come, come apart. There really was a standard back then. They weren't that different from each other. This here is a windshield trim remover tool. You see that hook right there? So this might be kind of rare. I don't know if it's hard to find or not, but um, I've had this one for decades. Never lost it, so I just keep using it every once in a great, great while whenever there's a vinyl top to do. So this is what removes that chrome trim around the back window. And there's Miss Nibbles. Looking for her tummy rub. So this is technique number 48. So technique number 48 is not hooking the hook on the edge of the glass like that. So what you want to do is you want to take a stuffer tool like this and put it under the chrome to lift it up. And then you can see it. So you're looking underneath the chrome, okay? You put the hook like this behind the clip, okay? And that's what releases the chrome right there. So last thing you ever wanna do is you wanna, okay, this is the other secret, okay? Maybe nobody else will tell you this, and, but you're hearing it first, maybe for the first time. If you're a younger guy, never did a vinyl top. So anyway, back glass won't crack like that. So if you catch the glass like that and you chip the glass because this is back tempered glass, okay, it, it's not going to crack the glass. Okay, so anyway, you're a lot safer getting rid of this one here, but the front windshield is different. Very, 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 very different. If you're on the front glass and you catch it like that, it's, a crack is just going to run all the way across the windshield and that would be a huge tragedy. Ask me how I know. There's been uh, times in my life where I've had to replace windshields. Okay, so you really want to be careful. You make sure that you get the hook behind the clip. Let it release. And you're like uh, golden. So don't tell any of your friends, but the side trim here is really easy to come off. So don't go around taking off the people's side trim like this, okay? Yeah, I know you can do this like in a parking lot. But we're not going to do that, are we? Yeah, confirmed. And this is why I'm going to work on this in the mornings instead of in the middle of the day. So here we are the next morning because it's a little cooler in the morning. It's going to be like 106 or something today. But you notice there's a lot of moisture in the air. It's nice and humid and hot. So anyway, let's start tearing this up. Oh, 
hopefully it comes off real easy because that's the whole reason I'm redoing the top is because there wasn't enough glue. Look at that. So far so good. I hope it all goes this way. Oh, you are not going to believe this. Do you see what I see? Oh my gosh. This is amazing. I've never seen this before in my life. What were they thinking? Oh my gosh. Well, let's try the other side. You remember my old saying, where there's no glue, it's not going to stick. I guess there we go. I guess that is very true. Do me a huge favor and comment and tell me what you think about this. And while you're at it, hit that like button. It helps me out. But I'm not going to ask you to subscribe because it doesn't help me out that much. So I don't care about too much about subscription, but I do appreciate it. Well, this is the easiest vinyl top I've ever had to strip off. I thought I was going to be here for the next couple hours scraping. And there's George. He came out to help me. Hi, George. Come out to help me? Mm-hmm. Come here. Come here. This is clearly obvious why that top wasn't sticking to the roof. You saw it here. You saw it with your own eyes. You didn't have to just take my word for it. So this is going to be an excellent example here about mineral spirits and contact adhesive. So I poured some mineral spirits here on the glue. Let it sit a few minutes. I don't know how long this glue's been here. But I figured maybe it was still a little soft. And look at that. Mineral spirits. I'm telling you. And you can also see where the mineral spirits doesn't do anything at all to the paint. The paint is just fine. There we go. Mineral spirits. So what I'm using here is a plastic scraper, not a metal scraper. So I'm just going to do this all the way around the top. So one disclaimer is they're not always going to be this easy. Okay, especially if you have an original top that you've taken off an original car that's been on there for 40 years. Okay, the, the glue, the old glue is going to be dried up and crusty. Okay, it's not going to be, still be pliable like this one is here. This probably been put on in the last few years. So anyway, and then I didn't have to do the center of the roof. Wow. Still can't believe that. But anyway, they're not all going to be this easy. Just be warned. This is going to be a lot easier than normal because I actually have a pattern. So, 99.999% of the vinyl tops I probably have ever done means shredding the original top and uh, just scraping it off and it's coming off in a thousand pieces so there's never a pattern. So, I guess I get to show you how to make it from a pattern. No, don't laugh. I know you can see there's no glue on that top. I, I can hear you laughing. 
What's pretty standard is a 42 inch center deck on a car that's this size. So with our overlap it's going to end up being that 43 you see right there. Okay, let's go with the 43, right here, 43, right there. I'm going to show you how to do it if there is no pattern. So I marked off my 43 inches right there on both sides. What you do is you find your center, mark it, then you double check, make sure all your measurements are the same on both sides. Now what I did is I marked my center right there on the glass, back glass, did the same on the front. Okay. So now we know where the material goes. No guessing. I know you guys hear me say no guessing a lot, right? That's because I know a lot of guys out there, and gals maybe, what they do is they eyeball it. They say, oh, that's pretty close. And then you know what? Yeah, it's not an accurate way of doing things. So anyway, what I got here is we're going to find our center right here so we know where that is that's how I do it you get the material fold it in half and that's got to be pretty accurate right if not I've been doing it wrong for 43 years Okay, we got our center marked right there. Well, I laid up my blank up there. <laughs> So this is the side here, and of course you can see I left plenty of overlap, right, all the way around. Make sure they have a lot of extra material, because you can't go back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark right here where these two go together. Now I'm just going to make some quick reference marks like this. That way I know that they're all going to be together. It's like that when I go to sew it up. We have a left, now we're going to make a right. So we'll take our pattern that we just brought in from outside, flip it over face to face. Let's go ahead and cut it out. Transferring all our marks So everywhere I put the yellow mark See one right here So I'm going to show you technique number 5486 The reason that number is so high is because I never use it uh, usually what I do when I go to sew two pieces like this together for a vinyl top I always sew it in about an inch So I mark in an inch like that And what I do is I just really sew it freehand all the way down on my sewing machine That's why I've always done it, but you know what for you guys. I'm going to give you this extra treat I'm going to show you how to do it the easy way So if you marked one inch all the way down 
and then draw your line if you draw your line one inch you just sew right on the line no guessing okay let's sew it up what I'm doing is I'm using that black line as a guide The way I would normally be doing it is I would aim for something that's on my sewing machine. So if there's like a, one of these little drilled holes on the side of my sewing machine here, I put the edge of the material next to that. That's how I usually measure it. The next thing I do is I sew another um, stitch right along the edge of these two materials right here so that way they don't separate. See, so now that's what I'm talking about right there. There's a guide, first stitch, second stitch. So everything's held together nice and neat. Now I'm going to show you how I do it. Okay, so let's say I take this uh, piece of tape right here. It's really about 5 eighths of an inch right there. Or about 17 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is take a little piece of tape here. Put it along here. Like that. That's my edge, right there. So using this piece of tape here as my guide, right there, let's sew it up. Actually, I don't use a piece of tape like that, but I'm cheating again. I'm showing you guys the easy way to do it. Darn it. Now the last things we got to do is glue the two seams. The reason I put the glue on the deck side here is because when I go to fold it over like this, on the top side, the fold is going to be going towards the outside of the car, this way. So I don't think it would look right if the fold was going over the car, over the deck, this way. You know, like if you're a roofer, you know that when water sheds, you want it to go down and you don't want it to collect anywhere. So if it was reversed, if this was reversed, it was going like this, downhill, the water's going to collect right there. And besides, it wouldn't look good and it wouldn't be the standard anyway. Somebody's bound to say something if you did that. So what I do now is I make sure that this is stretched pretty good. Just lay it down like that. So now for technique number 5,487. Okay, the reason it's such a similar number is because we're still dealing with the vinyl top, which is not that common. So anyway, what in my technique? is take the biggest honking socket that you can find. This one here happens to be a what? 36 millimeter, okay? It's nice and heavy and it's big. You can get a nice good grip on it. So what I do with it is I take this and I press down. Press down on that seam. Can you imagine what it's doing to that seam and why I'm doing this? Because 
because now we get this result. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that prettier? Now we just got to do the other side and we have a vinyl top. This is my fourth morning out here. It can only work for an hour and a half while it's cool outside. So the sun hasn't come up yet. So anyway, next is I'm gonna be putting masking tape. Okay, so this is technique number 488. What that is, is that helps when it comes time to clean up, to clean up the glue. What you're going to do is that when you put tape, it's going to help your cleanup go by much faster. It's going to catch a lot of your overspray. I'm not going to worry so much about the back window because the glue comes off of glass really easy anyway. So earlier I marked center both on the glass and on the top. So I did that on the both on the front and did that on the rear. So I'm gonna tape that up. So we're going to do the half and half method. So just as always, only using the best that's available. Don't go cheap on your customer, okay? So we're using the contact adhesive Landau top and trim. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're doing a Landau top today or vinyl top. So don't use anything other than this especially for something as important as a vinyl top we found out right from the last install so this is all i ever use for anything so why would you go lesser on lesser glue on anything like say a headliner or carpet this is what you use i only use one kind of glue and for those guys that always ask the questions i never clean my gun I never thin the glue and I don't know what number the tip the gun is on this cheap uh, Harbor Freight spray gun so I think I got all those questions answered in about 10 seconds okay here we go let's go glue her up let me know in the comments if this is at all satisfying to watch So I do all the perimeters first to make sure nothing got missed. So next I fill in all the all the middle.
Make sure there's plenty of glue. Remember, where there's no glue, I can't hear you. It won't stick. Well, that's something it never had before was glue on the roof, huh? In the old days, we used to take the tape balls like this and throw them at each other. Okay, let's flip it over. You saw where I set the center first, and then I do the ends second. So what I do when I set the corners, I grab the seam right here, and I pull back and out. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to check our work. We're going to see how straight that seam is. So this is what I'm talking about. We got to check our work. Always check your work. So I can see that there needs to be an adjustment right about this area. So I'm going to pull this up, pull it out, straighten up that seam. So now for technique number 5488, what I do is I take a straight edge like this. And this will help me get a straight edge on my seam. Traffic's getting louder out here. Rush hour, I guess, 8 o'clock in the morning, maybe 7.30, I don't know. So anyway, this is now going to be technique number 5,489. What this technique is, is setting this rear quarter panel right here. Okay, so what the technique is, is when you do the quarter panel on the other side, it would be like the letter C. So, of course, on this side here, it'll be a reverse C, a backwards C. So what I mean by that is when you're pulling like this, what you're going to do is you want to pull in like this. So that's what I'm talking about, the letter C. Okay, so what that's going to do, that's going to help mitigate any wrinkles. So when you're pulling, you do the, you do the backward C on this side. Ready? One, two, three. Set that. So now you see that your wrinkles are going this direction. So if you know anything about upholstery, you know that to get the wrinkles out, you go the opposite direction. That's another technique. So I'm loading you guys up with techniques today. Okay, so you see the wrinkle go in this direction. So what you do is you pull it to go the opposite direction. So when you pull, you really pull hard. Okay, You're, it's a little easier for me because I got a bunch of weight behind me, right? But anyway, what you want to do is you want to really stretch that Manny Woofer. I hope I didn't just say a bad word. Okay.
like that. So we're gonna do the same exact thing for this uh, A pillar here. We're gonna do the C on this side. This side gets the C. See how that came out right there. So the first thing we're going to do before we forget is we're going to press down this whole top. We're going to make sure all the glue is contacted. Contact adhesive. Rub it all down. Give it a nice massage. this top ain't gonna come off again Wow, the traffic noise out here sounds like a jet engine now so let's go ahead and go do the other side Now for trimming, you're gonna want two things. Nice, good, sharp pair of scissors and a nice, sharp, brand new razor blade. Now you're gonna see why we call this a stuffer tool. One thing you're really going to want to be careful of is if you have a new, as you can see, this thing's seen a lot of battles. But um, if this was new, this edge right here would be really sharp. But I have like years and years of erosion where this has got nice and smooth. Because you don't want to use that sharp edge trying to tuck in vinyl like this because it could tear the vinyl. If you tear the vinyl, that would be a tragedy. So just be careful when you're doing your, your stuffing and your tucking.
now for technique number 5490 okay what that is is that's the trimming out these uh, windshield molding clips so we have a uh, we have clips that are here, 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 all the way across. So what I do is I take the scissor and I, when I'm cutting these out, I use the, the clip itself as a guide. So I, I, I put the scissors right against that clip there and I trim it out. So there's the guide, just like that. Do that to each one. The reason I use that as a guide is so that way I don't go too short. If I go too short, then that's trouble. So that's what it looks like. Just like that. We'll do that all the way around. Well, we got a top on. Now all I got left to do now is just uh, clean up the glue and put on the trim. Well, you wouldn't have known it, but this is actually, I think it's the fifth morning. So it's morning again. So I feel like I'm in uh, Groundhog's Day, you know, doing the same thing over and over again in the morning. So anyway, next is I'm gonna get ready to clean it up. So here we go. Good old Mineral Spirits is gonna take off this blue overspray. As you can see, the mineral spirits, it doesn't harm the paint. Okay, let's put all the trim back on. So something that is very important to note that if you're going to be using a tool like this here to tap down this trim, what you don't want to do is you don't want to put this tool right in the middle of the trim there because you could probably dent it. Okay, so what you really want to do is you want to put it on the back side of that ridge right there, just like that. Because that's where it's strongest and it's not going to dent. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the tool on that ridge we're going to tap it down.
So anyway, like I was saying, 